Hi there, I'm Katherine Karash, acupuncturist at home, and this week on the blog I'd like to share with you one of my very favorite uh, personal tools that I use in my day-to-day -day life, which is my bullet journal. I discovered bullet journaling um, not actually through the bullet journal website, which is a great um, resource for anyone starting out on a bullet journal and that is www.bulletjournal.com but actually through what is still my favorite um, bullet journaling uh, video series and blog which is the, the Boho Berry um, website and she also has a YouTube channel and she is amazing so if anyone wants to start a bullet journal I would absolutely suggest you start out with those two resources first but I'm going to tell you how I use uh, personally a bullet journal to organize my life what it is and what I find so special about it so I'm gonna turn you down into um, a view of the journal and I'll share with you what I love about it okay so here's my journal um, it's uh, Leuchtturm 1917 dot grid um, bullet journal. I use it and I have a Sharpie pen that I also love to use and those are my main supplies. You can use markers, you can decorate it however you want to. That's just, I'm a pretty simple bullet journaler uh, because I like to be able to take it with me and I don't want to have to take a bunch of supplies with me whenever I go places. So I'm just going to walk you through it and show you what I use my bullet journal for. So What's great about a bullet journal is that it combines both a agenda and a journal at the same time. And it's super duper flexible for whatever it is that you are, are needing to log, that you are needing to track in your bullet journal. So the first thing I do is I have my 2017 sticker, which I actually got from Boho Berry's Etsy shop because she has way more beautiful writing than I ever could. One day maybe I'll be able to do this, but... For now, I'll just let her do it, and I just bought a sticker, and it's wonderful. Then, um, because I started my new bullet journal in May, um, so just two days ago, I also include a uh, log that where I can put all of um, my upcoming um, appointments and schedule in the months to come, which is part of the count, the part of the agenda part. Um, so I just do it in the four months because I go through a bullet journal in four months and then anything that I would plan beyond those four months I put on the horizon page. So one of the wonderful things that I use my bullet journal for is all of my goals. Now of course I use it to track um, and keep track of everything that encompasses being a mom to busy kids, the day-to-day -day planning of that and the day-to-day -day planning of owning a business. But also, I really like to track my big goals. I'm a, I'm a dreamer. I love um, having things that I'm striving towards. Um, so what I needed was a way to really um, siphon them down and funnel them into real tasks that I can do to get myself to that goal. And that's what I use the specific planning um, parts of a bullet journal for. So, for example, one really, really great way to um, come up with your big goals is actually through The Miracle Morning and Level 10 Life. Now, The Miracle Morning is a book by Hal Elrod. I can show it to you in a clip in a little while. It's just on my bookshelf. And he um, categorizes your life, your personal development, into 10 different areas of your life. And then what you do is you um, sort of do a self-assessment on how you're doing in each of those 10 areas of your life and give yourself a mark out of 10. And then what I then do is I write down all of those things and how I am going to personally, um, I use sort of two or three um, points that I can do in a practical manner to make these levels rise. So those are my big goals that then I can siphon into smaller bits every month or every week or every day. Another way that 
um, you can approach that is also through the 10 guideposts, which is convenient, again, the 10 um, different ways to, this is how to live a wholehearted life. This is based on a book um, by Brene Brown called um, The Gifts of Imperfection, and she breaks it down into also 10 different categories, how you can practice, have your daily practices bring you towards having a whole, living a wholehearted life. Um, so again, I wrote down the 10 um, guideposts, and then again, how I was going to make those happen. So then, when it comes to actually planning in a month, you have your goals, you have what you're working towards, but then you need to figure out a way that you can make those big goals happen, while at the same time managing what's going to be a pretty busy life for all of us. Um, so how I do that is when I get to the month, my month of May out of my um, beginning section with all of my goals, I <clears throat> start by writing what I know the big things that are going to happen um, for that month. So I have the dates, the days of May from the 1st to the 31st. And these are all the things I knew as of May 1st that were happening in May. <clears throat> and then on this side, I put um, these are the goals that we want to, or tasks that we want to accomplish this May. Um, this is my health tracker that I need to fill out. <clears throat> and then specific to the level 10 life and the guideposts, I wrote one thing that I can do in each category for this month to get me closer to level 10 in both of these categories. And then, um, once you have those uh, goals, you then can um, use those to then plan your weekly and daily um, trackers and goals. So also within the month of May, I have my one line a day, which is where I sort of do my journaling part. This is where I write something that happened. So we're May 2nd, I haven't written anything down today yet. I write something that happened today. So yesterday my daughter started her soccer um, season and she was amazing at it and it was very sweet to watch her. Then I'm also, <laughs> this is the worst soccer ball in the whole world and I don't know why I thought I could draw a soccer ball but I can't. Um, so this is where I write down what I'm grateful for each day or draw what I'm grateful for each day. Boho Berry actually, I think she got it from another woman that she collaborates with has a visual gratitude journal, which I thought was very funny because one of the things that I would like to work on is being able to sort of draw better and doodle better. So I'm gonna give it a shot, but it could be bad also. We will see. Um, then my next page is my time log. Now I use this a lot because I run my own business and I'm accountable to um, my governing board for how much time I'm spending working every day um, and I like to keep track of it because, of course, I work in drips and drabs. I have, you know, a couple clients a day usually, but they're throughout the day. And then I have my all my administration work and I do all my professional development, not in an organized nine to five type fashion. So this works really well for me, but might not be something that is effective or necessary for people who have a regular nine to five or shift work job. This is just very, very helpful for me. And then I also have my ideal day, which I also really appreciate having just to see how I'm doing and to see um, how close I'm coming to having a very effective day. Then on my other side, I put down, I try and post on social media for my business once a day. Um, so I'm, I write down sort of what I want to uh, or what I have or what I'm going to post for that day and that way I can make sure that I'm posting a lot of different content and I'm getting everything across that I would like to um, on my social media and um, website platforms. Next I um, track my spending because one of the ways, one of the things that I would really like to be more accountable for is that day-to-day -day spending. I'm sure we all will. And by writing it down, what I've spent every day, it will really show me where my money's going and where 
my um, weaknesses are and things like that and will help me stay accountable to my own bank account. Now, uh, another thing that I do and is I have a cleaning um, tracker where I want to make sure that I do all of these tasks, but I am also, I would say maybe an over cleaner. So I want to make sure that I can say, well, you know, oh, I should really clean the kitchen. Well, I cleaned the kitchen three days ago. Is this really something that's necessary or is there a better use of my time than cleaning? And a lot of the time what I should be doing instead of cleaning my kitchen is exercising. <laughs> so I'm hoping that by having this tracker, I'll be able to keep myself accountable to the tasks I need to do, but also not overdo it. Now down here, Cultivating Resilience is one of the um, 10 guideposts in Brene Brown's um, book, and it in it she actually um, has a mnemonic that it's A-E-I-O-U, -A and these are ways that you can help yourself cope with um, things going wrong or uh, not according to plan in your life and how you can be more resilient to those sorts of issues. So those things are being abstinent, which of course isn't the same for everybody else. I guess suppose some people could use, um, could have sex be their crutch, but for a lot of people it's things like TV or it's things like video games or it's things like junk food. Um, even social media and YouTube could be a a crutch or a trigger or uh, for them, an addiction for them. So it's, you know, you have to sort of address, you have to um, figure out what your, what your problem area is and then try and keep yourself accountable to minimize that addictive behavior. And then did you exercise today? What have I done? What have you done for yourself um, your day? So that's the I. I suppose there's no actually I, but this is the what have I done for I, and then what have I done for others, for so O, oh, and have I done something, or have I left any of my emotions unexpressed? And if you can um, make sure that you're practicing these behaviors daily, you'll be able to cultivate more resilience to change to hard times in your own life. So those are my monthly trackers. And after I get into my monthly trackers, I then can um, move on to my week. Now, this is my week um, as of, I haven't updated it since, actually I think, maybe it was yesterday I updated it, because usually I update my calendar once a day in the evening. Um, so this is sort of my, these are the special appointments I have, and these are the things that just happen every week, every day of every week. Then I also do my meal planning here um, so that then I can make my grocery list and go grocery shopping during the week. And then based on um, all of these tasks and whatever is in my, um, on my monthly log, I then write my weekly goals. So my weekly goals for this week are um, to do a bullet journal journal video, yay, doing it right now. I have to make a chiropractor appointment. I have to do my newsletter for my business. I really need to clean out my iPhone storage because we are going on a trip later this month and I don't want to run out of storage. I needed to get the girl's haircut, which I did today. Uh, we cleaned, cleaned out our garage and shed uh, this weekend, so I have some stuff to sell and I have to clean my car, which I did yesterday. So once I've um, gotten my small to-do list for the week, which is partly here again and partly on my weekly or on my based on my May monthly goals, then I go into my daily planning. So um, here was April 30th um, and I just on the evening of April 29th wrote out all the things that I wanted to get done that day. These were these are things that I'm selling and I have had a really hard time tracking who was buying what and when so I just had to write it down. So that was my day on Sunday and then I also like to write the weather just because it's interesting and because I like to draw 
the little sun and cloud. Um, and then I do Monday, which was yesterday, and those were all the things that I wanted to get done on Monday. And then Tuesday, which is today. So, and then I have, this is my, um, my script, I suppose, for this uh, video here. So I'm just going to expand a little bit more on why I love the bullet journal so much. Well, there are so many attractive characteristics to bullet journaling for me, um, but specifically I have them written down in my um, little lovely script here. I love to use the bullet journal um, as a way to track not only my day-to-day -day goals, but then also my big goals. Um, like I said, it also, I can use trackers like my um, cleaning tracker and my resilience tracker to really keep me on, on track, to keep me accountable to the goals that I have set for myself. Um, and one really big thing for me about the bullet journal is that it gives me a really practical and productive way to siphon some of my creative energy. I find it so therapeutic to do creative things and but the problem is that as a mom and as a business owner I don't always have a ton of time or space or um, a lot of chances necessarily to do all of the creative things that I love to do without sacrificing things that are more important to me like spending time with my kids like being successful in my business like supporting my husband in his business um, so while I love creative outlets like scrapbooking, like photography um, and painting, and I love to decorate um, my house and other people's houses, whoever will let me. Sorry about the choppy video. My camera is rapidly running out of um, storage, so I keep having to delete things after I'm done uploading them. So uh, in essence, I just love the bullet journal and the way that I can use the tool um, exactly how I need it, that it's so flexible and um, and you can be so creative with the way that you use it. So please, I encourage all of you to start um, using the system. Please check out those two resources that I suggested. I'll also leave them in um, the blog notes below. And um, I hope you love it as much as I do and I hope that you find it as effective a tool as I do. Um, I hope to see you next week uh, well, we'll, where we'll learn about uh, pediatric Twena techniques for treating kids in their colds and flus. So, bye everyone!